Hey everybody, Hey Cardware here, and in this video I am going to just show something that I finally got set up. It took me like the whole day, mostly because I kept making stupid <laughs> mistakes going through everything that I needed to do, but I've been wanting to do this for a long time because I'm a long time pie hole fan, but I never really had it set up the way that I wanted. And the way that I wanted was two things. I wanted to use Unbound, which I prefer. I mean, there's going to be a lot of different opinions on whether Unbound really like makes things more private. I think it does. I think it's useful, and I prefer to use Unbound, so I got that working. And then I also created a DNS hijacking rule or policy on my Unify Dream Router 7, which I never could figure out how to do either because I'm absolutely terrible at networking stuff. Uh, but I just want to showcase it, and then I will have some additional guides and information on how to get this set up in the future. I'm working on a really cool website, but it's not ready yet. I need to document more things and get it ready before I release it. But instructions on things like how to set this up will be on there, so subscribe, like, and uh, you'll get notified when I finally release that stuff. Uh, but let's just get into the demo here. So. This is Pi Hole. I have it set up on 10 0 50 200. And first thing I'll show is if we go down here into settings and I go into DNS, the only DNS is this 127.0.0.1, and that's on port 5335, and that's unbound. And this is all running on a Proxmox LXC with both. Uh, Pi hole and unbound on the same LXC. Uh, so it works really well. And I have actually a dedicated VLAN just for Pi hole because it just makes this so much more seamless. And Pi hole is kind of an exception to how I set things up. I mean, it, it definitely, I think, um, makes sense to set this up on a separate VLAN. Uh, but I'll get more into that, I think, in like the actual guide. But, anyways, this just shows that I have unbound set up. And then we'll just go to the query log here, and I've been messing around with it a little bit. And on the right side here, I have Sirius. Now, this is actually the Proxmox host that is hosting the LXC. And this is actually on VLAN 10, and the uh, Pi-hole LXC is on VLAN 50. And again, there's a reason why I put it on a separate VLAN. It makes the policy a lot easier to write. Uh, and it just it removes one error where things were timing out when I was trying to uh, do the DNS hijacking policy. So anyways, what I'm going to do is basically show that everything's working. So we'll just do a dig at google.com. And we check live here. We can see it shows up here, google.com. And we can see that it is using 10, 0, 50, 200. Everything goes through uh, as it should. And if we were to do dig uh, double click dot net, we can see it goes into the abyss, 0.0.0.0. .0 so it's blocking. We can see that go through right here. Everything looks good. It's coming from Sirius, which is this IP right here on my VLAN 10. And so we can see like cross VLAN is working just fine. Uh, everything is looking good. Now what's really cool, well, first let me show you, let me prove to you that it's going through unbound. So if we do this is on my pie hole, LXC. If we do system CTL status unbound, we can see it's running. But let's do system CTL stop unbound. Now it's no longer running. So theoretically, nothing should go through. So if we go up here and we do dig back, okay, so uh, we need to technically do a new website. So we'll do dig, uh, what's a new, uh, bbc.com. And we dig that and nothing comes back. The reason why it worked the first time is because Google obviously is in the cache. It's going to be able to figure it out. We can even see these requests coming through, but they're getting forwarded to that upstream DNS and it's not there. So we'll just control C, uh, that failed anyways. And let's do system CTL start unbound. And we'll give it just a kind of a second here. And now we'll do dig and we see it works perfectly fine because we actually um, have our upstream DNS server working, which is exactly what we want. Now, so we got unbound working. That's one check. 
now we want to check out this policy. And how the policy works is uh, in my Unify router, this is a Dream Router 7, but it should work pretty much on anything using like network version 9.4, 9.5, and even before that, but it probably looks a little bit different. Uh, how this rule works is basically we're setting up a NAT policy and it's a destination NAT, DNAT, and and I have to set this up for each VLAN that I have, but for now it just matters that it's on my main VLAN, which is 192.168.10.0 slash 24. And what it's going to do is basically reroute any attempts to use another DNS server to the translated IP, which is 10.0.50.200, and that is my pie hole. And of course we're going to translate the port also to port 53. I'm only using IPv4, and it's TCP UDP. Now the source, that could be pretty much any anything on the VLAN should trigger this rule uh, because it could be using a different port. It could be using any number of IP addresses. It doesn't matter. Uh, but if the destination is uh, any IP port 53, we know it's looking for a DNS server and we're basically going to match this rule and then it's going to reroute it through and it doesn't even know so it could, you know, try to reach 1.1.1.1, and it's going to get a response, but it's going to be from my uh, pie hole, which is awesome. I like that it's kind of like sneaky, uh, that it's just going to get a response. So if we close that, and how can we prove that this is working? Well, one way is we can actually use NSLOOKUP, and we can do something like Google.com, and we're going to see you know that it goes through uh, the server and everything just fine. So, you know, this is what we would normally want. But if we do NS lookup google.com, and actually let's bring up PyHole again, and then we do 1.1.1.1, so we're kind of forcing it, we still get a response. But look, it's going through our, uh, our PyHole. So, and we can prove this even more because, uh, you know, maybe it did get a response from Google, but if it actually, or maybe it did get a response from, I think that's Cloudflare, 1.1.1.1, uh, but it should not get a, like a valid response for something that's blocked. So if we do nslookup um, double click dot net 1.1.1, we can see even though it still says, oh hey yeah, that's who I talked to, and it gave me back this null address here. So we know that for sure. Even though we're specifying 1.1.1.1, it's going to return from our pie hole with what we want. So those are the two things that I want to get set up. I do, like I said, I have a website that I'm working on. It's going to have uh, all of my guides, but so much more. It's basically going to be documentation for my whole home lab. So you kind of have an idea of like the context of these guides and like what my setup is. Uh, but I want to get it kind of all done, or at least the documentation part of my home lab done before I post it. So unfortunately, there's no guide for this right now, but there's going to be a guide for Unbound and a guide for uh, PyHole in the context of an LXC running on Proxmox. Um, and it's going to basically, uh, we're going to do a lot with, with PyHole. We're going to get some groups running so we can use different aggressiveness for our blocking depending on which VLAN or which uh, like subnet is going through PyHole at the time. So the groups are going to be super powerful that way. I don't have to run multiple versions of PyHole for like different VLANs. I can use one PyHole for all my VLANs and set things up with groups. That way, you know, um, my client VLAN, which is going to be where I have like my actual Windows computer that I'm on right now, that's going to have like a moderate block list, but then my IoT is going to have like a super aggressive block list because I don't want it phoning home to anything. And we'll even have some like policies for that VLAN to really make sure nothing gets through that I don't want. Uh, so that's going to be pretty cool. We're going to cover that. And again, so much more, but I have been trying to get stuff like this to work for the longest time network things like NAT and stuff, I spent the whole day researching and trying to understand it. So I'm not just like copy pasting or blindly clicking things. Like I actually understand what's going on now, which is pretty cool. Uh, so hopefully, you know, this is cool and exciting to other people. I'm definitely going to share more about this, uh, but I want to create more 
uh, helpful guides like this in addition to like all the other things I'm doing with AI and general Proxmox guides. So stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.